please read through the instructions in the manual or watch this video in its entirety before attempting installation and be sure to pause the video when necessary. It is also important to have someone assist you to help prevent injury or damage. Make sure you have the following tools required to install the washers. Unbox the main washer and mini washer with the box cutter and safely remove the packaging material from the units. Embedded in the styrofoam packaging materials of the mini washer are the bracket brace, bracket frame, and holder needed for assembly. Remove them and set aside. Remove the shipping block located on top of the mini washer and set aside. Remove any plastic or tape on and around the unit. You will need to remove any package material located around the drawer to access the contents inside. Review the contents inside the installation kit where you will need them to help install the components to the main washer and water supply lines. Rotate the top cover 180 degrees and use the four small screws from the installation packet to mount the cover firmly in place. Remove the bracket frames from the styrofoam packaging and mount the bracket frames on each side of the rear of the mini washer. Each bracket frame requires four Phillip head screws. With someone to help, Tilt the main front load washer backward, exposing the bottom of the unit, and hold. Mount the separate operation prevention holder, as shown using a Phillips head screwdriver, and two screws. Mount the corresponding bracket base to each side as shown using seven screws for each bracket. With the main front load washer still tilted, fully retract the feet of the unit using the wrench tool provided that came with your installation kit. When finished, set the unit down carefully. It will take two people to lift the main front load washer to place onto the mini washer. Align the front load washer's feet according to the top part of the mini washer's corner placement settings and make sure the separate operation prevention holder is seated correctly atop of the separate operation prevention switch, also known as the stacking switch. If not mounted correctly, the unit may not work properly and you may encounter an error code. Mount and tighten a total of 14 screws into the leg support and bracket frames to securely attach the units together, as shown. Use the wrench tool provided to readjust and level the legs of the front load washer. Be careful not to over tighten the feet as it could damage the brackets. Follow the same instructions to properly adjust the legs and lock nuts to level your mini washer. Remove the contents from the front load washer's drum. Move to the back of the front load washer and remove the three transit bolts using the wrench tool provided. Replace these with the transit bolt covers that came with your kit. Take a moment to review the water supply line setup shown here on the diagram to better acquaint you with the water hose connections and its parts. You'll need to have ready four water supply line hoses to connect to both the main and sidekick washer to the faucet and inlet valve connections. Remove the contents from the installation kit and take a moment to become familiar with the parts. Connect one of the short hoses to the hot water supply faucet and tighten firmly into place. Take the water hammer arrestor and connect it to the cold water supply faucet as shown and tighten firmly into place. Connect the other short hose to the open end of the water hammer arrestor and tighten firmly. Connect the center leg of the two Y connectors to each of the short hoses and tighten firmly into place. Using hoses you supplied, connect one hose to the hot water inlet valve and another hose on the cold water inlet valve on the upper back side of the main washer and tighten both firmly into place. On the sidekick, use each remaining hose and connect one hose to the cold and hot water inlet valve. Tighten both firmly into place. Now connect the main washer machine's hot inlet hose to the hot water faucet's white connector and do the same to the main washer machine's cold inlet hose and connect it to the cold water faucet's white connector and tighten both firmly. Now take the Sidekick's hot water inlet hose and connect it to the hot water faucet's white connector. Do the same for the Sidekick's cold inlet hose and connect it to the cold water faucet's white connector and tighten both firmly. Turn on the water, check the faucets, main washer, and Sidekick inlet valve connections for any leaking. Install the drain hose using the clamp 
Make sure the drain hose elbow is facing upward. Connect the front washer and sidekick washer's drain hoses to the big Y connector using a clamp on each hose as shown. Failure to use the clamps could result in flooding if the hoses come loose from the Y connector and drain hose. Insert the drain hose Y connector in the drain. Use a tie strap to bundle the hose securely together. Take another tie strap to secure the waterline hose and drain hose together for extra precaution. Once finished, thoroughly check around the faucets and inlet valve connections for any leaking. Vibration pads are included in the installation kit that comes with your main washer. The pads help prevent the transfer of vibration from the washer to wood floor structures. Install the pads on all four washer feet. For extra stability, add non-skid pads to the floor underneath the front legs of the unit with the adhesive side down once you determine the final resting position of the units. Whether you're placing the vibration pads onto the feet of the washer or moving the unit, it is recommended to tilt the unit from the sides. Never push the unit from the front or back or you risk damaging the unit, property, or cause injury. You can now plug in your units and move them both into the correct position. Use a level to make sure the units are balanced. Readjust the legs and install the non-skid pads if necessary.